we're going to present to you a Facebook movie review page called Golden Row Reviews. This is a very awesome, indeed, a very awesome Facebook page right here. And we're just, all we're going to do right now is just going to read you some uh, reviews. So this first review we're going to read for, for you is called is from uh, G.I. Joe Retaliation. Uh, the sequel to the 2009 movie, and that was, movie was pretty bad, Rise of the Cobra. Those who remember that, it was pretty forgettable, I thought. <laughs> Alright, um, so this is, a, the, this is what his review was. Wow, what a letdown. Let me start off by saying that if you want to see this because of Channing Tatum. 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 What is it? Channing Tatum. Channing Tatum. He's only in it for like the first five minutes of the movie, and then he never shows up again. So the movie was delayed nine months for extended screen time for Tatum. He had less than five minutes originally. That's stupid, especially since he was the main dude in the first one. So the Joes get attacked yet again and are forced to witness the fake president begin a nuclear war against all the nations who possess nukes while the real president is held in some bunker. However, you don't really find all this out until the very end. The plot was all convoluted, and if I had to start naming plot holes, I'd be here. I'd be here all day. Also, apparently, no one gives a damn about that um, stuff in London. I guess they weren't too concerned about it. Which, I mean, come on, you just don't ignore that. I really wish they included some of the original cast members. They didn't even bring back Joseph Gordon Love. Exactly. The Rock was great as always, and I would agree with that too. The Rock's always great. So was Angeline Angeline uh Pali I can't pronounce her. Pali Key. Oh my god, she was gorgeous. Okay, that's nice. One of the few highlights in the whole movie oh and uh well that's a, that's actually an interesting highlight if that was um yeah, if the, he, he, he seems to really think the movie's really bad. But uh, Oh, and there was some other dude who I don't even know who he really was. He did uh, he did Park Hour, though. That was kind of neat. Bruce Willis did his thing. Oh, my God. Bruce Willis is awesome. Bruce Willis is in G.I. Joe. That's... Yes, but he's getting too old for those action movies. <laughs> oh, well. As long as he's doing what he likes but to do. But he's awesome. Snake, Snake Eyes and, Sto and Storm Shadow, back being badasses. Although I don't understand how Storm Shadow is back, given the circumstances of the first movie. Oh, and did Destro do that? He's out of the band. They just left him there. Uh, this movie was honestly just a mess. Nothing really made sense. It kind of felt like Transformers 2. It's all just visual appeal. There were some pretty um, awesome scenes, but that's basically it. It pains me to say this, but I wouldn't recommend this. I guess this is what we get when the director is also the director of Justin Bieber's Never Seen Ever. Who also wow, did, he wow. He also did, um, I think I read, Step Up 2 and Step Up 3D. And I don't like the Step Up movies. Oh, by the way, the first one was starring star Ch Channing Tatum. <laughs> that was like his breakout role, and that was pretty bad, too. That's just absolutely pathetic. The director for Justin Bieber's pathetic movie... The one movie they got 1.1 out of 10 on IMDb directed the sequel to G.I. Joe. Okay, you know that's just going to be... You know that's just like... A directed gonna, the step-up sequels, except for the latest one. You, you, you know that there's going to be low expectations for this movie to begin with. You know If you knew the director's credibility, you know, being the director for a Justin Bieber documentary, which really wasn't all that much, all that really hard to put together to begin with. I mean, really, it just wasn't. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, this movie seems like it seemed like it was a really a big letdown. Uh, I can't really uh, say how he felt about the first movie because I would ask his personal opinion I, about that. I, I, but um, anyway, back down to this point right now. Um, well, I saw the first movie and that was really forgettable. That was very bad. I have to say. Um, so I guess uh, this movie, like uh, again, he felt as though this movie was a letdown. So again, five out of ten. Okay, so. Um, Again, uh, this is a Golden Row review, folks. Uh, uh, he does, uh, you know, trailers, you know, for movies. He does, uh, you know, TV spots, uh, posters. He, 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 you know, uploads posters. Oh, Olympus is falling. Yes, I know. I'm getting to that. Um, so this movie right here is, um, this is a movie I would really like to see. So this is his review of Olympus has fallen. Um, easily the greatest action movie of the year so far. This movie was 
awesome. So the White House gets attacked, and Ger Ger Gerard Butler comes and saves the day. Luckily, him too, because his post-300 career has been nothing but chick flicks. He's back, and he's more badass than ever. I was skeptical as to how they would set this up, but honestly felt pretty real. The whole invasion scene was intense. Once that AC-130 appears in the sky, it just starts tearing things up, Call of Duty style. All these enemy soldiers then come out from their cover, and it's literally a war zone outside the White House. My only, my only problem was that there was a scene where the Secret Service just started pouring out the front door where there is clearly two giant-ass machine guns ripping them into pieces. Take cover. Um, you idiots. Yeah, you idiots. They're the SS, but besides that, it was epic. After the initial attack, it was all up to King Leonidas to find the president and his son. It's basically Die Hard 1, but in the White House. There's non-stop action, guns blazing, and terrorists getting stabbed in the head with knives. The main villain could have been explored more, but his intentions were very evilish. Haha. -ha. His plans were pretty frightening if it were to happen in real life. The supporting cast was great as well, especially Morgan Freeman. Oh my god. He never... He says he says he never disappoints after that, and he really, you know what, guys, he never really does. Morgan, Mar Morgan Freeman is God, basically, yeah. Um, so if you want to see a straight up action movie that delivers, see this. It's awesome. I have no idea how Ronald Roland Emmerich Roland Emmerich is going to top this with his char with his Channing T Tantum Tatum and Jamie Foxx version later this year. I didn't even know he was directing a new movie. <laughs> For those who don't know Roll Number, because he directed Independence Day, Day After Tomorrow, and that remake of Godzilla in 2012. Uh, so yeah, 8.5 out of 10, folks. So yeah, awesome movie right I there. I guess I'll check. I mean, I heard it wasn't bad. I mean, I was expecting class. Oh, no, it's this. The Call, starring Holly Berry. Yep. I wonder what he has to say about this one. Uh... Holly Berry stars in a movie where she received a 911 call from a girl who gets kidnapped, and what follows is an incredibly intense chase sequence that grabs hold of you and never lets go. Not gonna lie, my expectations were low for this, but it was surprisingly not that bad. See, I'm gonna get to, I'm gonna get to that point later, uh, later on the show. Just a heads up, roughly 70%, 75 percent of the movie is just this one 911 call. I'm not even kidding. It's all basically this one chase scene with the girl in the trunk. Holly Bailey, as the 911 operator and the police trying to find the car. Luckily, that that was intense as hell. You are constantly rooting and yelling and screaming and making a bunch of weird noises at the screen as the events unfold. There were never, there were even some unexpected jump scares that made us all laugh at their success. Ha ha. Unfortunately, there were some flaws. Some of the things the characters did were stupid. There were things they could have done instead or done faster that would have greatly help the situation. Then we get to the final confrontation which really brought in more tension. The scenes fall into place. Something happens and you're like, oh. Oh damn. Yeah. You prepare yourself to strap in for the crazy stuff that's about to occur and then all of a sudden it ends. Oh my god, I wasn't expecting things to get really messed up in a good way. But the filmmakers didn't take advantage of the things they, they could have done. They took the easy way out and gave us a half-assed ending. Overall, the movie was much better than I thought. If you plan on seeing this, I suggest you see it with a group of people because it would be much more fun interactive. 6.5 out of 10. And yeah, that does sound pretty interesting. I really think it does. Uh, I never really heard of a concept of a movie, of a movie like that, you know? So, that sounds interesting. Again, the, uh, the, uh, the, um, Olympus Has Fallen, I would definitely see that as well, you know? Yeah, but do you have a joke retaliation? Hell no. I'll not see that at all. Nope, not at all. Um, and yeah, so uh, just one more uh, thing I want to cover right here. Uh, this short film right here called Drawn Together. Uh, so I was given this little sweet video filmed by a couple of Knox students at Knox College in Illinois. And I was asked to review it. Even though it's only six minutes long, it's pretty entertaining. The story is simple. A boy draws a picture for someone he loves, but he isn't confident enough to give it to her. He throws it away, and some uh, from and from and then on, he we follow this piece of paper as it travels all around the school, going through recycled uh, used bin papers, uh, paper bins, excuse me, etc. Then finally, it arrives at a surprise destination, which is meant to show you that you shouldn't quit so easily. Very nicely edited for the most part, but since you never see anyone's faces and the camera's doing close shots, some of the transitions were a bit confusing. Other than that, a very solid project done in under two weeks. 
since it's a video that can be found on YouTube, I don't think it would be fair to give a full on rating of out of 10 since my rating system is based on is balanced on between full length films. Therefore, I will simply say that you should ch definitely check out this video. It's only six minutes long, and hopefully, you will feel slightly happier. Haha. <laughs> so that's a you know he gave out a little shout out to a, a small short film right there on YouTube, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so yeah, again, you know, guys, I think you should really go ahead and check out this channel. I uh, mean, not channel. Why am I saying that? Oh, Facebook uh, page. Yeah, Facebook. Yeah. Facebook page. Uh, so yeah, Facebook page. And uh, he brought up a good point on something that we're, I'm going to talk to later. But first, uh, we're going to play some more music.